Hello, everybody. Ben Rogers here with the Raptors Digest. Riker. Yep. CJ Miles. He had a very Three up J and down. Miles. Three J Miles <laughs> had a very up and down season last year. He's known as a three point sniper that always likes to start games shooting contested three point shots from four feet behind the three point line. You know, looking at, looking at CJ Miles' first season as the Raptor. What what would before we get into what we expect from next season? How would you sum up right. his year last year? Average. Average? Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. he is a man that is almost the exact same as Lou Williams, except a little bit less exciting. I think when Lou Williams gets hot, it's amazing, given he's so mm-hmm. small and crafty. But yep. you're, you're, you hit the nail on the head when you say that C.J. Miles loves those contested shots. And there was a stretch mm-hmm. that I really felt that he was not able to make an open stand-up <laughs> Three point, three point shot. Unless he was fading in the corner with a hand in his face, I honestly felt he was more he was more consistent when he had a lot of defense on him. It's like almost like oh, the basket's wide open, not hard enough. But yeah, he was either making shots or he wasn't. And I mean, obviously that's what everybody is doing. But what, it was exciting when he made those shots. But I think more often than not, obviously he wasn't. Um, mm-hmm. And I think he he almost felt like a little bit below what we expected of CJ Miles on the team. No, I, I 100% agree with that assessment. And this year, he just he became very inconsistent. That's the word to sum up C.J. Miles last year. You know, some games he'd have 25, 26 points off, you know, seven threes and others. You mentioned it. He'd be missing open shots. And the thing about C.J. Miles, that wasn't really the case for his game before he came to Toronto. He's a pretty consistent guy because, you know, if you look at just the season before, he was shooting 41% from three. And then he came to the Raptors, and it dipped to 36%. And yeah. I, I think a, a product of that is, like, he shoots just dumb shots at the, at the start of games, right? When he starts off with the open corner ones, those are the games that you then see those fadeaway corner shots going in. It's almost, obviously, he's a much better shooter than Serge Ibaka, and, you know, that's a, that's a whole other rant for a different video. But he has the same effect. He needs to get the open shots at the beginning of the game, in order to get his confidence going. He's a very streaky guy and, you know, as a very streaky player when I play myself, you need to you need those confidence boosters at the start of games. It's a, it's a big mental thing with CJ Miles. Yeah. Well, it's a tough ask from three-point from a three-point shooting specialist, say that's that's what we'll call him to be consistent mm-hmm. on a nightly basis. And I think even if you look to the Golden State Warriors as a case study, I don't think that any any individual player is consistent on a nightly basis. This might be a hot day, but no player is consistent on a nightly ba- basis except for maybe Kevin Durant when it comes to three-point shooting. I mean, even Stephen Curry has nights where he'll go two for ten, right? Clay Thompson. Draymond Green. These are all guys who we've come mm-hmm. to expect to put up big numbers, and they do, but it's not necessarily from the three-point line. And the, yep. the reason is because the three-point line is not an easy shot. That's the reason it's worth three points and not two, right? And mm-hmm. I think the the problem with C.J. Miles, and this is what I'll ask you, I think the problem with C.J. Miles is not that his consistency dropped or his ability to take three-point shots dropped or his IQ in taking certain shots became dramatically worse. I think that perhaps it was the system that he was in in terms of even though the ball flowed a little bit more, and I, I don't want to credit to being on an unfamiliar team, but I think perhaps the Dwayne Casey system, perhaps maybe the isolation ball, perhaps maybe when he thought that he was allowed to take a shot, maybe all of that played a part in towards maybe his confidence or maybe the, the, the shots that he was taking. Like, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Do you think that it was really his, his IQ or do you think that maybe just the, the whole system was maybe a little bit flawed for having him as a, as a piece? So you mentioned, so he played with the bench mob mostly last season, right? And we love the fast pace, the aggressive defense and all that, that the bench mob had. But the thing about the mob is the only other person that could really shoot was Fred Van Vliet. DeLon Wright was fine, but he's not a three-point shooter. Siakam, especially for the beginning of the year, was just awful from the three-point line. And obviously, Jakob Pertl took like one all season. He hit one, but uh, you know he's not a three-point shooter at all. So CJ was <laughs> really the only guy that that could you know let it fly from outside. So he, he, when the ball got a bit stagnant, obviously the bench mob had very hot stretches. And oftentimes when the bench mob was hot, that's when we'd see CJ Miles playing at his best. So... I think the key for CJ is just getting him in a lineup that's consistent movement and have other shooters out there so he doesn't have to force up those very tough shots. 
Yeah, other shooters and creators. That's the yep. issue too. If you want a three point shooter, you need a creator because if you're the mm-hmm. last option or if you're the guy with the ma- the ball in his hand when the the shot clock is down, I mean, guys like Steph Curry are you know so skilled at ball handling that they're able to make space to have a three point shot, and they're so skilled at shooting too that they can do a step back or a you know a pull up three. That's not CJ Miles' game. He's not skilled enough to to create to make a three point shot, right? Mm-hmm. Not consistently. Yeah. So what his what his position is his best ability is to finish open three point shots. This is exactly yep. what you're saying. But I think that that lineup, as good as the bench unit was, I think it was their pace and their defense that allowed them to be good. Right. Yeah. It wasn't. If you slowed that bench mob down to five on five, there was not a lot of skill in terms of creating yep. a, a, an open shot. Right. Mm-hmm. Siakam. I mean, he tried, but he's not a skillful player. He he's better in the open court. Jakob, not a skillful player. Delon not consistent enough to be a skillful player. It really did rest on Fred to be the main creator to, you know, to drive and kick. And I Mm -hmm. think that that's the reason that, you know, CJ, like you said, he was taking those, those weird shots is because those were the only shots that were given to him. But at the same time, I don't necessarily forgive. Like, what do you think? Do you think that, do you think that CJ would have a position on the team, right? has minutes if he's not able to create his own shot. Is there any point in playing him? I think there's always value, even if they're inconsistent, in a three-point shooter. And, you know, we talked about last season a lot this well, last year. C.J. Miles, he's mentioned on Twitter. He's uh, He's been outspoken, right? People are tweeting at him. They say apparently C.J. Miles went through a few different things last year. You know, he just had a newborn kid. He had a few nagging injuries and all that. He He's pumped. He's amped up to have a bounce-back season, be more consistent and all that stuff this year. So, I, I think... We might be able to see him more because if we get that just pure, you know, Kyle Corver esque consistent three ball, you know, whether it's off the bench or, or starting alongside Kawhi, I I think that could be infinitely value for the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, but now okay, so now you say that his consistency dropped, but if we just look at the stats, right? Mm. He averaged okay ten points per game last season on four less minutes. Or sorry, yep. yeah, ten points per game on four less minutes, and only dropped point seven points per game. So it went from ten point seven down to ten, right? So yep. really, if you just look at those numbers, he was playing better with the minutes that he was given, right? Mm-hmm. Personal fouls down a little bit, um, rebounding from three point, you know, three three rebounds a game down to essentially two rebounds a game. Assists up a little bit because he was playing in more of a free flowing system on the bench on the bench unit, and then like you said, went from. Uh, 41 percent to 36 but if you look at the two seasons before his 41 percent, he was at 36 as well and then 34 so really he's been inconsistent from season to season Mm -hmm. so the main question is what lineup do you see that will bring out the 41 percent three-point shooting cj miles player and what lineup do you want to stay away from that will encourage the 36 percent 3j miles well the the thing that really uh, brought that you know forty one percent shooting up was when he was playing alongside Paul George. That was a season where he you know really got a lot of minutes. He didn't start every game, but he they oftentimes played CJ and Paul George together. So I think just having you know Fred is a phenomenal creator, but he doesn't draw the attention that a guy like Kawhi or Kyle Lowry does. So and last season, right? Everyone wanted to see CJ Miles at least get some run with the starters just to see how it would look. You know, obviously we loved OG and we wanted OG to be our starting three. But CJ Miles never played with guys like DeMar DeRozan and Kyle. Right? It wasn't until like game three of of the Cavs series that Dwayne Casey really tried to see what CJ Miles could do with the with the starters. So, you know, maybe the fast pace is the best position, you know, bench mob is the best position for CJ. I don't know. But I think we should really just try him out alongside you know Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry just to see if he can get those open shots and get a confidence going and maybe you know get that consistency back to where it was yeah that's good that you said that because that's that's what I was thinking and I wanted to see without any encouragement if you Mm -hmm. would think the same thing what I would see to be the best the most ideal way to use CJ Miles and of course this is a hypothesis but Mm -hmm. there might be some some better way I don't think that he is good in the bench unit Right, but I don't mm-hmm. think he should be a starter. I think that the way that the rotation should work that he has two six to eight minute shifts with 
a Kawhi Leonard or Kyle Lowry. And yep. I, you said it exactly the same thing. I think he should have reduced minutes, though, because I don't think he needs to be playing 20 minutes per game. I don't think he provides enough on defense nor offense. But I think in a good six-minute shift where he is able to warm up his three-point shot with a player that attracts the attention of Kawhi Leonard, I think that's where you would see the most the highest three point percentage from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mentioned you don't like him with the bench mob. I disagree with you there. I think it's him with a mob and you know with guys that can't really you know sc- shoot from three that well, right? I don't think that's you know as advantageous for CJ Miles' game particularly. But I do think that helps the offense. And he was you know even when he wasn't clicking, just having his three point presence out there. You need a three-point pro- – you need – especially if, you know, DeLon and Siakam don't develop their three-point shot next year. And obviously, we're bringing in Greg Monroe, who can't shoot either from three. So, you need some three-point shooting out there just to take the pressure off those guys. Whether it's going in or not, you have to guard C.J. Miles. You can't let him get hot. So, I think he could probably put up the best numbers and be most effective with a, you know, with a star on on the court with him. But – I don't think he's necessarily not valuable with the bench mob. Yeah, well, we'll just have to see. Or hear all the swishes. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. We're going to hear a bunch of C.J. Miles swishes next season when, when Nick Nurse crafts the, the top lineup to make him splash those threes. Let us know what you guys think of C.J. Miles. Do you want to see him get more minutes, less minutes, play with stars? There's a lot, a lot of different options we can do with... Uh, our whole roster honestly so let us know in the comment section below check out the instagram the twitter all that cool stuff you know a lot of cool things popping Riker. yep see you later <laughs> <laughs>